simple ratios. Let's recall it. If first I will be writing a title theorem on equal ratios. If a by b is equal to c by d, then what theorem of equal ratio says each ratio that is a by b is equal to c by d is equal to addition of numerator upon addition of denominator a plus c upon b plus d. It can be generalized as well in general. If we are having three to four ratios, say a by b is equal to c by d is equal to c e upon f, say dot 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 dot. And if we are having some uh, non zero scalars, non zero numbers, you can say, what is that, say l. M and these are non zero numbers such that the linear combination that is L multiplied to B plus M multiplied to D plus N multiplied to F. This all are non zero. Why they are non zero? Because they are going to be in new denominator. So once the linear combination is non zero, then each ratio, each ratio that is a by b is equal to c by d is equal to e by f is equal to, we don't know the terms, how many terms are there, is equal to just as we are multiplying l to b, we need to multiply same term l to a, so l a plus n c plus n e plus dot 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 divided by l b plus n d plus n f plus dot 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 dot. As this is non-zero, so that it can be in uh, denominator, no issues. So from this, we conclude that if two ratios are equal, then it can be generalized, either in the form of addition or in the form of uh, subtraction, which is called as theorem on equal ratios. And uh, as per requirement, as our question is uh, demanding for the situation, we will uh, subtract it or add it as per the demand. So let's uh, move to the practice set that we have left last time. We were doing a practice set 4.4 in that we have completed almost two problems. In the second problem, we need to get the value of Mn. So let's do that. The given, given is 3, 5m minus n, 5m minus n is equal to. 3m plus 4n. This is given part. And after giving this, they are asking us to find the value of I have derived the first one and I've asked you to solve the second one. So let's do second one as well. No issues. To find to find 3m plus 4n divided by 3m minus 3m. We have to get this value. How to get this value? So last time we have uh, derived and got the value of m by n. So 
let's uh, get the value of m by n again from this equation from equation one from equation one what we are having just take all the terms of m together that is 5m minus 3m is equal to 4n taking minus n to right hand side will take a positive sign so 4n plus n so what we are having 5m minus 3m is uh, 2m and 4n plus n is 5n so at ultimately we want the value of m by n so what we will do we will just take 2 to right hand side and n to left hand side so m by n becomes pi by 2 hope you have understood this once we get the value of m upon n so as per requirement you can see that we want value of 3m plus 4n and 3m upon 3m minus 4n so along with 3 or along with m we are having 3 and along with n we are having 4 so what we will do we will multiply so therefore 3m upon 4n what we are doing we are multiplying by 3 by 4 on both sides if you don't understand like this we will write the reason 3 into 5 upon 4 into 2 just right since multiplying multiplying 3 by 4 on both sides. So, 3m upon 4n. Why we are very much intended to get 3m upon 4n? Why not 4m upon 3n? Because we can see and to find along with m, what was the number 3? So, my intention was to get 3m. And along with n, we were having 4. My intention was to get 4 again. So, this is like common understanding. In order to get 3m upon 4n, we should multiply by 3 by 4. So, our demand according to the situation was 3m and 4n. So, we did accordingly. So, what is the answer? 3 multiplied by 5 is 15 and 4 multiplied by 2 is Eight. So we got the value of 3m upon 4n as 15 upon 8. Now, we want addition in numerator and subtraction in denominator. So what we will do by component and dividend? Do. By component do. and Dividend do. We get. What do we get? I write on the top now. Three M plus four N upon 3m minus 4n so as we are adding according to component we are adding in numerator and according to dividend we are subtracting in denominator so 15 plus 8 upon 15 minus 8 what is the value of 15 plus 8 it is 23 and 15 minus 8 is 7 so this is the answer for the given or asked expression you can say asked expression so we have completed the second problem now we'll move to third problem Yeah, so next problem is that what is given? Question number three. 
given a into y plus z is equal to b into z plus x is equal to c into x plus y. This is the equation that we are having out of which a is not equal to b is not equal to c why because they have given the statement and out of a b c no two of them are equal no two of them means neither a is equal to b nor b is equal to c nor c is equal to a and show that huh, by this uh, we can conclude that a minus b is non zero how how you got there what do you do just take the combination a not equal to b take another combination b not equal to c take one more combination that is a not equal to c so from here what you will getting take b to left hand side so it will take a form of a minus b not equal to zero so how we are doing just we are taking additive inverse on both side like we are subtracting by b on both side so a minus b not equal to zero and here b minus c not equal to zero and here a minus c not equal to zero so this is like a, a protocol or a basic idea behind mathematics that we are using additive inverse hope you have understood this step so this is a given part and no two of the number is equal means we are having this conditions so they are asking us by giving this condition they are asking us to find we need to get the value of y minus z upon a into b minus c is same as z minus x divided by b into c minus a is equal to x minus y upon c into a minus b We need to find in the sense we need to show this. We need to show that each ratio is equal to to show. If we will show this means we are through. So by using this condition, we need to derive y minus z. So what we need to do first, as we can see that. We require A, B, C in denominator. A, B, C, and there by observation in a given part we cannot see A, B, C. So, give it equation number one. Dividing equation one by A, B, C. Throughout we get a y plus z divided by a b c b z plus x divided by a b c c x plus y divided by a b c. So. what we can see is a present in numerator as well as in denominator a strike this a here what is same in numerator and denominator b cancel this b here c cancel this c so what remains right that so therefore y plus z divided by bc 
z plus x divided by a t x plus y divided by a b after guess now we got a b c and denominator means here we can see b c here we can see a c is present here we can see a b is present so now we just want to see that what is our requirement first this is our ratio as earlier we used to have a by b equal to c by d now we are having y plus z upon b c is equal to z plus x upon a c so instead of a b a by b and c by d we are having y plus z upon b c so this is our ratio and whatever we are going to solve that will be equal to this each ratio so which which <coughs> we will get by using theorem on equal ratios so let's start with the step <coughs> sorry <coughs> what we will do uh, first we want to get y minus z y minus z means we need to use theorem on equal ratios yeah exactly by theorem on equal ratios but in order to get the rate of x so choose those two ratios in which x is present so here we can see that x is not present y plus z is there so we don't select this select z plus x and x plus y as we are going to subtract x will cancel each other and what will remain y and z okay and as well you we can see that y minus z is there so we will be using this term first right by theorem on equal ratios each ratio equal to by theorem on equal ratios each ratio is equal to as we have decided we need to take x plus y first and i have discussed why we are going to take x plus y first minus z plus x divided by ab minus ac hope this step is okay by theorem on equal ratio says uh, just whatever the ratio you are having if you are going to add them or subtract them they remain the same we are doing the same as per requirement uh, our demand is for subtraction so we have few uh, subtraction instead of addition just open the bracket x plus y minus z minus x upon we are taking a common b minus c cancel this x the terms with opposite sign gets cancelled and what remains is y minus z upon a into b minus c so this is our first ratio so you can write it the equation 1 or we have already used equation 1 so this is equation 2 now that is second is of the type z minus x so we will subtract those two terms in which y is common so first and last and uh, what is positive z is positive so y plus z will be first okay so by theorem on equal ratio this ratio But you don't want equal ratio. Each ratio is equal to. 
what we want the demand is of z minus x so as we have decided it will be y plus z minus last that is x plus y divided by bc minus ab so just open the bracket y plus z minus x minus y divided by b c minus a have taken b common and what we can see is we can subtract y or we can cancel out y as uh, they are present with opposite signs so y gets cancelled so what remains is z minus x b into c minus a okay let's move to third part assuming that you can easily solve it but we'll do it full problem no issue it can be easily solved again so as per requirement we can see that our demand is of x minus y so uh, if you have written just see there that theorem on equal ratio each ratio yes now you should say what we are going to select the requirement is of x minus y so select those two terms in which we are having z common so first and second term and x is positive means second first and then second one so z plus x z plus x minus y plus z uh oh, what is the value of z plus z plus x is ca minus y plus z is uh, bc let's open the bracket z plus x minus y minus z divided by you can see that c is common take it outside a minus b remains and cancel the term with opposite sign z gets cancelled what remains is x minus y divided by c into a minus b but this is our answer so we have completed third problem it was the proper application of the harmonical ratios in which uh, after uh, having our ratios in different form asking something to show so the required scenarios so what we have done we have found equation 2 equation 3 and equation 4 So from equation two, three, and four, what we can conclude? Let's conclude the required whatever they are asking us to show that. So from equation two, three, and four.
the whole ratio means whatever they were asking us we can say that each ratio is equal means they are equal so y minus z into b minus c is same as z minus x upon b into c minus z is same as x minus y upon c into a minus b that this was the required solution for the given third problem so let's move to fourth even uh, that is same as that uh, only the difference is that uh, in this case they have given us uh, something in denominator and they're asking us to show that each ratio is equal to 1 so let's let's do it <clears throat> so question number 2 third 2 what they have given x upon this is given part x upon 3x minus 3x minus y minus z is equal to y upon 3y minus minus x is same as z upon 3z x minus 3z minus x minus y with a condition x plus y plus z not equal to 0 <laughs> sorry x plus y plus z not equal to 0 we need to show that each ratio to show that each ratio is equal to 1 This all right. Means we need to solve this, and uh, just need to show that this is nothing but equal to one. So by theorem on equal ratios, uh, we will write here each ratio. Each ratio is equal to just into add this x plus y plus z upon why we are doing this because uh, they have given us directly that x plus y plus z is not equal to zero. <laughs> so what we will do? We will add all the denominators and numerators. We will apply directly 3x minus y minus z plus 3y minus z minus x plus 3z minus x minus y. So what we need to get here is x plus y plus z divided by 3x. We are having minus x minus x, which is minus 2x plus 3y. We are having minus y. We are having minus y, so minus 2y. 3z. So we are having minus z and minus z, which is minus 2z. Just. Get subtract the terms. So this is demanding us to subtract. So we are having x plus y plus z divided by three x minus two x is x 
three y minus two y is y, and three z minus two z is z. Now, as x plus y plus z is present in denominator, we need to justify or we need to say that a term present in denominator is non-zero. Why? Because we are going to cancel this. Once you are cancelling any term present in denominator, you should say that it is non-zero because we cannot cancel zero. And the term present in zero tends our whole term to infinity, so that, that should not be zero. This is the uh, condition why we should say because of that only they have given us x plus y plus z not equal to zero. So its ratio is equal to one. So we have uh, proved this. So remaining uh, problem of question number three, that is the third, fourth, and fifth, is being omitted as per reduced syllabus of uh, state board. So just strike with pencil third, fourth, and fifth. Now we will move to question number fourth. In question number fourth, uh, there are uh, two problems. Uh, actually, both are simple, but. It's okay, we have done this in uh, 4.3, just above a problem. So, this time uh, we will solve it, but uh, by using theorem on equal ratios. So, only the difference is that, uh, and they just want to say that we have solved this above problem by using component and dividend, but this time again solve the problem by using the condition of by theorem on equal ratios. So, I'm solving uh, question of four first for you. First one, sixteen x square minus twenty x plus nine divided by eight x square plus twelve x plus twenty one. Four x minus five divided by two x plus three so this is given and they are asking us to solve this solve this in the sense just get the value of x so just uh, go through it and try to uh, correlate the coefficients and the term present, uh, we are, can see that here we are having 16 and 20. Here we are having 4 and 5. What we should multiply with the term so that so the, that we will get the same terms present here. So what should be multiplied with 4x? If we will multiply 4x with 4x, so what we will be getting 16x square. Yes or no? Very simple. And uh, what should we multiply to 5? So that we will get 20. 4 should be multiplied. We will to 5 we will get 20. So this is our observation. Huh? We need to correlate and uh, need to get the common multiple or the terms multiplied with the terms in order to get the same expressions present so that uh, we can apply our theorem on equal ratios. So we cannot apply theorem on ratio directly. It requires understanding and the terms should be proper so that after correlating, we can discard some terms and uh, get the required answer. So as well, we can see here, if we will multiply 4x in denominator as well, we will be getting what is the 8. And uh, we should be multiplying uh, 
4 x to 3, so we'll be getting 12 x. So let's see. By multiplying we we'll start with the solution solution say this is my equation one multiplying equation one equation one by 4x only in second ratio only in this is our first ratio and this is our second ratio so in order to convert it to 16 and uh, 8 we need to multiply the second ratio by 4x by 4x only second ratio we get 16x square minus 20x plus 9 divided by 8x square plus 12x plus 21 is equal to as we are multiplying second ratio by 4x. Just write the second ratio in bracket and outside we need to. Means it's not changing the meaning as we are multiplying and dividing. No? Plus 4x, 4x, by 4x in numerator, in we'll be, we'll be writing only multiplying, so only we can multiply, not we can divide, so in numerator and denominator we should write. And denominator. Of second ratio only, like this. Multiply okay, equation one by four x in numerator and denominator of second ratio only. We get so sixteen x square minus twenty x plus nine divided by eight x square plus twelve x plus twenty one is equal to and. 4, 4 is 16, 16, x into x is x square, 4, 5 is 20, and along with that, we are having x divided by 4, 2 is 8, x into x is x square, plus 4, 3 is 12, 12, x. Okay. So now we can see that we got the ratio in which we are having some common terms. So what we can do is, we can just apply by theorem on equal ratios. Each ratio is equal to. And we need to subtract now. So when we will subtract, we will be getting the terms, constant terms. And uh, we can correlate that constant term to any of the ratio that we want. We will be correlating with 4x minus 5 because it can be easily solved. Therefore, by here I'm on equal ratio each ratio is equal to plus nine minus Okay. 
8x square plus 12x plus 21 minus 8x square plus 12x. This is why theorem on equal ratio. Let's open the bracket. So we'll be cancelling the terms. Ten x square minus twenty x plus nine minus nineteen x square plus twenty x divided by eight x square plus twelve x plus twenty one minus eight x square. Minus twelve x. Sixteen x square. Sixteen x square gets cancelled. Twenty x. Twenty x gets cancelled. Terms with opposite sign. Eight x square minus eight x square gets cancelled. Plus twelve x minus twelve x gets cancelled. What remains? Nine upon twenty one. Three three za three seven za. <coughs> So we can use this value of each ratio to any of the one ratios. So I'll be using it to the second ratio. That is 4x minus 5 upon 2x plus 3 is equal to 3 by 7. So, therefore, we can conclude that four x minus y divided by two x plus three is equal to three by seven. Just cross multiply this. As we want to get the value of x, what we will do? 7 into 4x minus 5, 3 into 2x plus 3. Seven fours are 28x. Seven fives are 35 is equal to 3 to the 6x plus 9. So this step is okay to you. What we need to do is to take together our terms with variable and a constant term together. So 28x taking the 6x to the left hand side, so it will take a form of minus 9, taking 35 to that right hand side, so it is plus 35. 28x minus 6x, answer is 22x is equal to 35 plus 9 is 44. So just divide this, x is equal to 44 upon 22. 22 ones are 22 twos are. So we got the value of x is x is equal to 2. Uh, so you can try the one problem which is remaining by yourself. Very easy. Just apply theorem on equal ratio, get the value of constant, which is equal to each ratio, and equate it to the second ratio in the given expression, and get the value of y. So enough for today. In next lecture, uh, we'll start with continued proportion. Thank you, everyone. Ma'am?